over East Africa's Serengeti Plain, a turboprop flies an unsteady course. Since infancy, young Grubb has accompanied his mother, Jane Goodall, in her field research. Renowned for her continuing study of the wild chimpanzee, Jane has taken temporary leave from her work at the Gombe Stream Research Center and will join Grubb's father, wildlife photographer Hugo Van Lauwick, to investigate an animal whose behavior is as yet little known. Now ahead for Jane, Hugo, and Grubb, Hello, the hyenas Hi, of the Ngorogoro crater. Thick clouds hang low over the wind-blown rim of the crater. The Ngorogoro crater is an ancient volcano whose top collapsed millions of years ago. Today, it is a protected haven for wildlife and a paradise for predators. Particularly hyenas. About few animals have there been so many misconceptions. Traditionally, the hyena has been despised as a cowardly scavenger of the night. Rarely has its daytime behavior been closely observed. Now Jane Goodall and Hugo Van Lauwek will provide a new perspective on this misunderstood creature as they observe the intimate communal life of a group of hyenas called the Lakeside Clan. Jane Goodall, Hugo Van Lauwek, and their son Grubb descend 3,000 feet to the bottom of the Ngorogoro crater, which borders East Africa's Serengeti Plain. Below is the crater floor, a hundred square mile animal reserve, home to thousands of animals of many species. Because of the abundant food and rainfall which the Ngorogoro provides, most of its animals have no need to migrate elsewhere. At last, 
the den area of the hyenas of the Lakeside clan. Hyena social life is extremely complex. Since it is a matriarchal society, with females larger than males and dominant over them, we would spend much of our time observing the behavior of mothers and the antics of their cubs. <laughs> Hyena cubs already have many teeth at birth. Born in a more advanced state of development than most carnivores, they quickly display remarkable mobility. Each hyena has an individual personality. After watching them for a while, they can be easily identified, although it is difficult to initially determine which cubs belong to which mother, at least until they begin to suckle, for the females will nurse only their own offspring. There is much visiting between dens. Although the adults tolerate youthful mischief, discipline too has its place. It is impossible to tell the sex of young hyenas by observing them in the field. Both sexes look exactly alike until females have their first litter. The normal hyena litter is two cubs. They are born with black baby fur, which they will begin to shed at about three months. In some cubs, a struggle for dominance starts early as they compete for their mother's milk. This rivalry will continue throughout the 18-month-long nursing period. In contrast to most of the cubs, the two belonging to Miz, the dominant female and leader of Lakeside Clan, seemed uninterested in play. After a year and a half, they were still bickering over their mother's milk. We referred to them as the terrible twins, Thistle and Willow. Willow, the submissive twin, constantly whined and complained, while Thistle continually asserted dominance over Willow. Willow was going hungry, and Miz, the mother, showed concern. Now Miz changes position to give Willow an opportunity to feed. But once again, it is Thistle who takes over. Thistle will not even allow Willow near. Miz mm. displays her own dominance and status as leader of the clan as she abruptly displaces a male. Repeatedly, Miz tries to assist the timid Willow. But no matter how hard she tries to accommodate Willow and offer the cub food, it is Thistle who feeds. Finally, it seemed that Thistle had had enough, and Miz was at last able to devote complete maternal attention to Willow. 
perhaps for the moment, Miz had no milk for Willow, and so tried to reassure the cub in other ways. Willow seemed content. Miz, like most hyena females, was a good mother to both her offspring. Suddenly one day, a strange male appeared, whom we did not recognize as a member of Lakeside Clan. He seemed very interested in Miz. At first, Miz simply ignored him and concentrated her attention on the twins, who carried on as usual. We know that occasionally males will seek membership in a neighboring clan. Perhaps this hyena, whom we named Shadow, was such an intruder. Shadow's presence seemed to bother Miz, and she kept him at a distance. Perhaps due to the appearance of Shadow, Miz begins to sniff the area. She will now lead the rest of Lakeside Clan on a boundary patrol. It was Dr. Hans Crook, a Dutch biologist, who first revealed that hyenas live in social units, which he named clans. He discovered that there are eight different hyena territories in the Ngorongoro crater, and that each clan regularly patrols and protects its boundaries. Jane and Hugo follow as the Lakeside clan continues toward the border on a marking expedition to re-establish its territorial boundaries. In the Ngoro Goro, it is the distinctive odor of each clan's marking that delineates the borders of its territory. Leading the clan, Miz begins to catch the scent of previous lakeside markings. They're at the border now. Miz freshly marks the grass with a secretion from a gland under her tail. The others do the same. Sudden agitated flurry seemed to indicate that the scent of a neighboring clan had been found. It was the Scratching Rocks clan on their own marking expedition. A confrontation seemed imminent. Boundaries fluctuate depending upon a clan's success or failure in defending its borders. Led by the highest ranking hyenas, Lakeside Clan makes the first move. Scratching Rocks responds. The Lakesiders remain on the offensive, but Scratching Rocks seems reluctant to do battle. Now the Lakesiders enter Scratching Rocks territory. They seem to be routing the Scratching Rocks clan, pursuing it deeper and deeper into its own territory, when the skirmish is ended by the sudden appearance of a male lion.
confronted by a male lion, hyenas almost always give way. As the lakesiders retreated into their own territory, suddenly something caught their attention. Two lionesses with a fresh kill. And they were hungry. <laughs> Hyenas in large numbers have no fear of the female lion, and it seemed the two lionesses would be forced to yield their kill. <laughs> One of the lions makes a last ditch attempt to retrieve her kill and is repulsed. <laughs> Ms. will soon return to her twin she left with the lone male shadow nearby. But first, she shares in this decisive victory for the Lakeside Clan. It is early morning at Jane and Hugo's campsite in the Ngorogora Crater. Hugo will be off on his own in search of a hyena hunt, while Jane and Grubb head for the den complex of Lakeside Clan. the dens, I wondered if Shadow, the strange male, would still be there. By now, many of the hyenas of Lakeside Clan had become accustomed to us and seemed not to mind our presence, even when we came very close. As for us, we were becoming very fond of them, even when they seemed determined to eat our transportation. It was interesting to see that a hyena mother will sometimes move her young cub from one den to another. <laughs> this mother seemed nervous, for the members of the clan were seeing her infant for the first time. It has been reported that on occasion a male adult will kill a newborn cub. For a moment, it looked as if she were trying to hide her cub from us as well. Several miles away, Hugo is waiting for an opportunity to film a hyena hunt. Nearby is a family of Thompson's gazelles. Mother gazelles are protective of their spirited fawns while the male plays rough. For hyenas, they are common prey.
A zebra seemed attracted by the movements of the young gazelle. No harm done. I could only guess that the zebra was merely curious. It was more than curiosity that attracted the hyenas. The mother desperately tried to protect her fawn, but it was in vain. Hyenas have been thought of as merely scavengers. Actually, they are skilled hunters and often kill their own prey. The hyena had killed the gazelle within seconds after catching it, yet the mother was reluctant to leave her fawn and frantically chased after it, putting her own life in jeopardy. For a long time I watched, and I could not help but admire the courage of the mother gazelle during this dangerous and futile exercise. In the heat of midday, most activity comes to a gradual halt at the Dana area of Lakeside Clan. All through the lazy afternoon, hyenas make use of any puddle or pool to cool themselves and rest. They cover themselves with mud, making it difficult at times to tell their true color. little rest for Miz, though like the others she too sought peace in the mud and water, the twins continued to bother her, whining and crying to be fed. And there was Shadow, still hovering near. Finally Miz moved out of the water so she could feed the terrible twins. Miz seemed ill at ease. Was it because Shadow was so close? Shadow seemed attracted to Miz, but she obviously was not interested. Miz seemed ready now to nurse her twins. And once more, Thistle appropriated the mother's milk and denied Willow a share. I would not be surprised if one day Thistle inherited Miz's position as leader of the Lakeside clan. Miz had her problems. She had to keep an eye on Shadow, who still lurked nearby. At the same time, she was also trying to encourage the timid Willow to feed, despite Thistle's interference. It was getting increasingly difficult. Every day, Thistle seemed to be growing ever more dominant over the submissive willow.
Hugo returns to join Jane and Grubb at the den area of the lakeside clan. They are about to witness an aspect of hyena behavior still not fully understood. With great intensity, Shadow was watching Miz. The twins had temporarily departed. Was Shadow perhaps courting Miz? When Thistle returned, Shadow gave way. But only for a moment. As Willow rejoined Miz, in frustration, Shadow pawed the ground and watched for his next opportunity. It was incredible that Shadow persisted so. Perhaps this kind of persistence would eventually gain him admission into the clan. Sharply rebuffed, Shadow backs off and waits. It's as if Shadow doesn't quite know how to cope. Shadow appears to be getting tired. Miz seems determined not to yield. Perhaps he will try again another day. In the crater, dust storms suddenly arise. And just as suddenly, they will subside. Shortly after sunrise, Jane, Hugo, and Grubb arrive at the dens of the lakeside clan, quiet in the early morning. The terrible twins are asleep, allowing Miz a moment of peace. After one last precautionary look, Ms. Too goes to sleep. Now stealthily, Shadow advances toward the sleeping Ms. If he can take her unawares, he may yet win her favor.
Shadow has failed again. And again, he paws the ground in frustration. Up to this point, Shadow had apparently been tolerated by members of the clan. But now their behavior toward him seemed to support the theory that Shadow was indeed from a different clan. He stood his ground against them and took the offensive. Shadow was showing great determination, but the odds were against him. One by one, the lakesiders entered the fray. They mobbed Shadow and pinned him to the ground. <laughs> Finally, pursued by the clan, he was forced to flee. <laughs> Cory or giant bustard, weighing over 30 pounds, one of the largest of land birds. Now it guards its nest, lying directly in Shadow's path. In an unusual contest between a bird and a hyena, it is Shadow the hyena who is once again forced to withdraw. Jane and Hugo have left the den area to follow Shadow, curious to see what the fate of this lone male will be. Shadow was still within the territory of the Lakeside clan. It is unusual for a single hyena to hunt a zebra by himself. Shadow must have been very hungry. Although Shadow had begun the hunt, it was quickly taken over by members of the Lakeside Clan. A mare is separated from the herd. Isolated now, she becomes the prey. The zebra kicks and changes direction, but she is no match for the hyenas who have remarkable endurance. She will tire before they do. She is doomed. With their powerful teeth and jaws, hyenas are capable of cracking all but the toughest bone. Nervously, they cackle with laugh-like sounds as they violently compete for a share of the kill. Shadow looks on. He had started the hunt, but he is denied a place at the feast. For Shadow, there will be no share. Since we were unable to follow him at night, 
We had lost track of Shadow. After looking for him for several days, we suspected that he'd given up and left Lakeside Territory. Then we were surprised to find him, being mobbed once more by members of the Lakeside clan. <laughs> Apparently, Shadow was still trying to join the clan. I couldn't help feeling sorry for him. He was taking so much punishment. It seemed such a losing battle. <laughs> Shadow wanders off, a hyena alone. Though lions are not known to eat hyenas, the males do kill them. Shadow continues on his way. He enters an area where a group of wildebeests is gathered. The wildebeests face the hungry hyena, secure in the protection of their horns. But once they turn, they are vulnerable to attack. Although the wildebeests move away, they are ready to turn again. They are too much for a lone hyena to handle. We felt a growing sympathy as we watched this lonely figure. We continued to follow him, wondering where his story would lead. In a stream, Shadow follows the scent of fresh blood. lakeside kill. The clan has brought down a wildebeest. Tentatively, Shadow approaches. Shadow moves away for a moment, nervous about seeking a share in the feast. Finally, Shadow cannot resist. The reaction to his presence is instant. <laughs> Around Soda Lakes, there are occasionally patches of quicksand. Each step, Shadow may find himself trapped. Finally, Shadow's footing is secure. By the hundreds of thousands, flamingos are drawn to this freshwater inlet, where they bathe and rid themselves of the salt from soda lakes that encrusts their feathers. To shadow, it is a tempting display.
Shadow charges the flamingos as he would charge a herd of zebras. But the meal is elusive. Shadow's pursuit causes a tremendous flurry of agitated excitement as the flamingos seek the safety of deeper water. On land, hyenas display great stamina. In water, they tire more quickly. Finally, Shadow concentrates on a single bird. Success at last. Shadow moves to the beach, clutching his hard won catch. After so many failures, it was good to see Shadow succeed. but apparently it was not going to be easy for Shadow to keep his prize. Jackals are very efficient scavengers. This one was intent on thievery and would not allow Shadow to eat in peace. another unwelcome guest arrived. The kite could steal Shadow's meal with one successful dive. The hyena's hindquarters are particularly vulnerable to attack. The jackal was persistent, and then another one arrived. With both the harassment by the jackals and the insistence of the kite, it was growing increasingly difficult for Shadow to contend. <coughs> now Shadow is besieged by three jackals. <coughs> they are determined to take his catch. tactical move. Distraction to the rear, and a jackal gets half the bird. The beleaguered shadow is unable to eat, and just barely manages to hold on to what is left of his meal. He is outnumbered on land and in the air. Another diversionary tactic and Shadow's meal is all gone. After another long chase, Shadow emerged from the water with a new catch. We hoped he'd have better luck than before. This time, the jackals quickly took the whole prize. There will be no meal here for Shadow. Shadow gives up, leaving the flamingos to bathe in peace. As we followed Shadow, we realized he was heading back toward the dens of the lakeside clan. 
After all that he'd been through, could it be that he would still seek acceptance there? Miz and the twins were in their usual position. A shadow moved in more boldly than ever before. It was as if this would be his final and most determined effort to win Miz over. Suddenly, Shadow turned away. He seemed nervous and somewhat apprehensive. Miz continued to tend the twins, though Shadow was closer than he had ever been before. Shadow stood quietly, as if waiting for a reaction. But Miz neither threatened nor attacked him. And as he lay down beside her, she didn't seem to mind. It seems that Shadow may have at last won a place in the Lakeside Clan. At night, the Ngorogora crater is permeated by sounds, the moans of prey and the shrieks of predators. These are the hyenas of legend, with nervous giggles and terrifying screams cracking and tearing at their prey. These are the hyenas of the night, greedily pushing and scrambling for position as they compete for the spoils. It is a horrifying spectacle that seems to support the hyena's reputation as a vicious nighttime marauder. After observing the daily lives of individual hyenas, we found that there are many things about them that make them most likable creatures indeed. When next we saw Shadow, he seemed to be taken for granted. His presence caused no concern, no stir or agitation. Apparently, Shadow had gained admittance to the Lakeside clan. Now, Miz and the terrible twins were visited by a relaxed and confident Shadow. He belonged here now. Obviously, Miz had accepted him too.